I will call to order the transportation. Is Zay in there or something? Buddy. Right. Material? Can you guys hear me? We take a roll call, please. Here. Hart? Here. Keeley? Here. Noonan? Here. Alton? Here. Zay? Here. All right, we have a quorum. We have no public comment. I have a motion to approve the minutes of July 7, 2020. So moved. Second. Motion is second. He changes alterations or corrections. Will we have a roll call vote on this? Say. Aye. Echo. Echo. Aye. Hart. Aye. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Aye. All right, that passes. Next, we have consent. I would ask the motion to combine the approved agenda items 5A and B. So move. Consent agenda. Second. Motion to second those two are combined. Any questions? A roll call vote, please. Healy? Aye. Noonan? Aye. Halsey? Aye. Zay? Aye. Echo? Aye. Herb? Aye. All right, those passed. Now, moving on to procurement requisitions, may have a motion to approve a contract to Patson Inc. CBA Trans Chicago Truck Group for repair and replacement parts. So moved. Motion in a second. Are there any questions? Can we have a roll call vote, please? Say. Aye. Echo. Aye. Hart. Aye. Healy. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Kalski. Aye. Aye. That passes. Next is 6B with the DTP 195-20 contract to try to fabrication and body Second. for repair and replacement parts. I have a motion in a second. Are there any questions? Can we have a roll call vote, please? Healy. Aye. Noonan. Aye. Mulkey? Aye. Zay? Aye. 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 All right, those passed. Next is uh, item seven, the amending resolutions. I'm gonna ask for a motion to combine 7A through E, which are all amendments to various resolutions. You mean F? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Move to combine and approve. All okay. right, we have a second on that. Any questions on any of those seven <coughs> those items? Maybe we have a roll call vote, please. Healy? Aye. Noonan? Aye. Kalski? Aye. Zay? Aye. Echo? Aye. 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 All right, those passed. Thank you. Now we're under agenda item eight, which is the fiscal year 21 budget presentation. Chris, take it away. All right. So we'll pop it up on the screen. Presentation. So, thank you all. We move this. Um, so, this will be our 2021 budget presentation. So, you have the for those of you here have it in front of you. Um, we also did send Friday, if you recall, a rolled up budget of our total budget as well as just our operating budget uh, for your information as well. Um, so today, we so today. The focus, we're gonna spend quite a bit of time on revenue and uh, the impact of both Rebuild Illinois that passed last year, but also how COVID has affected um, both our fund resources, but also more importantly, our operating budget. We'll talk about our capital program in more detail. That's engineering construction projects, five-year outlook overview. And then um, we have a separate budget from all this and that's Century Hill Lighting District that we'll talk about um, at the very, very end. So real briefly, um, three sources of revenue, local gas tax, uh, four cents per gallon we levy um, uh, for the purchase of fuel within DuPage County, motor fuel tax, that's the, that's the state motor fuel tax that we get a portion of, and impact fees. Those are our three primary sources of revenue. We also um, you do get reimbursements, um, various federal state grants, those are competitive, so they're not as predictable. Um, we are eligible to receive a money under the infrastructure fund through the RTA tax, as many people, this whole committee knows. Uh, we have not received any disbursements from that fund since 2014. Next. So Rebuild Illinois, just to kind of recap, uh, did a couple of things. Number one, it increased the motor fuel tax from 19 cents to 38 cents, so essentially it doubled. But even though it doubled, it changed the formula for the second 19 cents. So they actually created two funds, the old motor fuel tax fund and some called the transportation renewal fund. That second fund, uh, MFT is distribute, distributed 55 local, 45 state. The new 19 cents is actually distributed 40% local, 60% state. So even though the funds doubled, our share would only go up by about 68%. It is indexed, 
So those of you paying at the pump since G July 1, you are no longer paying 38 cents, but you're paying 38.7 cents uh, based on the CPI. On the local gas side, it did set the minimum of four cents, which is what we levy. It also increased the number of communities or counties that can uh, enact a gas tax by passage of the county board. And it also increased it to up to eight cents per gallon. Um, again, if the county board were to pass it, it too is indexed. Um, the third component of Rebuild Illinois is a bonding component. So essentially it's $1.5 billion that the state will bond and grant that money to local agencies. Uh, DuPage County share um, of that will be about 36 million, just under 36 million or 11.8 million each year for three years. It does have limited project eligibility though. Next. So real quick, um, you have this uh, at your desk as well. This is a comparison of MFT prior to Rebuild Illinois and MFT since the passage. And so that's the first two columns. The third column is that transportation renewal fund, which we can't compare against because it's the first year. And in the far right, we have a variance. So on the MFT side statewide, there's wide variability between one month this year and the, pre and the same month the prior year. But what I really wanna focus on is the green area. So this is after the stay at home order was imposed. And you can see that April, May, June, um, similar to what we're probably experiencing with other taxes, we're down 20 to 40% in our motor fuel tax distributions. Um, when we developed our budget for this coming year for 21, um, talking to our state partners at IDOT, CMAP, we assumed based on these trends, again, it's only three months, that's not exactly a trend, we assumed a 20% reduction in motor fuel tax receipts the balance of this year and all of next year. Next, uh, same comparison for local gas. Um, the variability is much tighter. The driving patterns of folks in DuPage County tend to be more consistent uh, month over month, year over year, so less variability. But again, you can see the trends for April and May. Local gas is two years in two months in arrears. So we only have, again, 2.2 data points, but it matches um, motor fuel tax very similarly, 20 to 40, actually more than 40% reduction in receipts. So again, similar to motor fuel tax, when we developed the budget, we looked at the balance of this year in all of 2021 as a 20% reduction in projected revenue um, receipts. Next. So some of our uh, revenue, both the approved budget from 2020 and what we estimated this year, and then a projected 21. So I'll talk about the first two columns initially. So for the balance of this year for local gas, what we're estimating is about a 5.5 million reduction. A large part of that is the 20% reduction for the balance of the year in projected receipts. We've also seen slight reductions in you know, per other fees, permit fees, or wait over to mention, and just the selling of gas to our other departments and community partners is obviously down as less, there's been less driving. Contrary to that, on the motor fuel tax side, we've seen you know, a bump. And the main reason for that is at the time we did our budget in 2020, it was not known how the bond program would roll out under Rebuild Illinois. So we assumed zero for 2020. Obviously we've gotten two, not obviously, but we have gotten two disbursements, our 11.8 million. So that's why the significant bump, um, coupled with a 20% reduction. Impact fees, we're actually doing quite good in spite of COVID. We actually got, uh, we, we, we think we're gonna be around a million this year and then reimbursements you can see there. In terms of projected for 21, Again, impact, I'm sorry, local gas, we're assuming a 20% reduction um, in receipts uh, for the uh, allotments. On the motor fuel tax side, we got two favorable bumps. Not only do we have the bond, 11.8 in 21, that's the second of three years, but our, our biggest debt service of $9 million a year will be paid off on January 1. So beginning from that point, that 9 million a year that used to go to the bank is now gonna come back to, our, to us. And so coupled with that is also a 20% reduction in, in projected receipts on motor fuel tax overall. Uh, next. So our operating expenses. So our operating budget is exclusively funded through local gas. Uh, we get no general revenue funds. And so our local gas basically covers our personnel, commodities, contractual items. And so these, this is our historic expenses. Um, you can see our sweet spot is roughly around 16 million a year. We get some variability due to weather, mother nature. So it's you know, overtime, salt and fuel in the winter. Um, in 2018, we actually had a combination of higher salt prices and we had a robust capital equipment purchase. Uh, next. So this is a summary of our operating expenses comparing FY20 to 21. So this is the details that we sent on Friday, our operating budget. 
So on the personnel side, we're pretty close, 3%, you know, higher. That does reflect the, the COLA increase that was in effect last December, and then the corresponding increases in insurance and benefits, et cetera. On the commodity side, we're down uh, 4%. Mostly that is uh, more favorable salt prices uh, this past uh, bid, and also the hope and the, ex and, and the expectation the hope is that fuel prices uh, will hopefully remain uh, low like they are today. On the contractual side, that's a big drop. The biggest thing is we used to budget a contingency, um, so we have money. So if it's a, you know, not a favorable winter or something, we have zero contingency in contractual this year. And on the capital non-roadway, this is equipment purchases. Um, that's a, we'll talk more about this in detail. That's a significant reduction of the FY21 number of the 1.5 million. 1.1 million is actually carryover from this year. Things we've ordered that we won't take delivery until next year. So if that 1.1 was not in there our variance, just our operating budget, would be closer to 16% below last year. Right now we're 10% because of that carryover. But essentially we budget to our revenue in local gas when there's a 20% reduction, we can only do so much. Next. So our core operating, core, core operating budget. So there's our fund balance, that's local gas, MFT, impact fees, plus what's on deposit at US Bank. So that's 41 million and change. The revenue we project from the previous slide is 55 million. Take out our operations, so that's the 17 million. Uh, you know, that's our operating budget. Maintenance contracts, we'll talk about. Those are the contracts to just maintain our system. Uh, the debt service payment um, of 10 million, that's 9 million for our 20 year, but also 1 million for um, replenishment of, of, last year we got rid, we, we transferred grounds to facilities. So by doing that, we agreed with finance to take, there's a certain debt service that general fund co covers for DOT from a 2010 bond issue. And so we agreed to pick up an equivalent amount of that. So that's why that's 10 million and not nine. Carryover, these are engineering contracts, construction contracts that we're obligated to, to follow through into next year. So the available capital, 48 million change. So high level, where are we at with the budget after all this, Chris? Um, next. So the budget is 63.3 million, about 3% more than last year. Again, we're a very capital intensive department. You know, our, our operating budget is 17.7 million. Again, that's 10% below last year. You throw in the carryover of equipment, we really need closer at, we take it out, we need 16%. On the capital side, that's the biggest line share of our budget, 72% and 40, roughly 46 million. Next. Here's our maintenance contracts. You're familiar with all these. It's what it takes to keep our system operational. It's our resurfacing program, traffic signal, uh, maintenance, pavement marking, et cetera. These are very typical numbers. Next. Our capital program. Uh, this is the meat of our capital program. It, it covers engineering, land acquisition, construction projects, and participation agreements. So things that other people do for us that we pay our fair share. So I won't go into all these. We, this will be a summary of the next couple pages. Of, no, next. I won't go into all these. You have them or you know, at your, uh, if you want to call with any questions. Uh, real, real briefly, bolded our new start. So these are things we will be taking forward to county board in the next uh, year. And then bolded italics is not only a new start, but it's grant funded dependent. A couple of things I do want to highlight across the street, our garage and fueling station uh, do need to be replaced or significantly upgraded. So we will be initiating architectural engineering for those um, improvements, the 140 building and our fueling station. Uh, the other big one is Fabian Parkway, um, congestion relief and safety. Uh, that's one that member Zay and, and, and others have had meetings with. And so we'll be begin preliminary and or design engineering for that project. Next. Again, these are a list of projects, bold is new starts. A couple highlights on this one, Naperville Road, south of I-88. We'll take care of that little bottleneck there at Deal and, and where it splits off at Ridgeland. Uh, the other item is York Road in District 1. I, uh, the tollway is doing 390, 490. They're gonna be impacting York Road with their improvements. It makes absolute sense for us to get in there, completely reconstructed and not be there again for a very long time um, as Western access develops and evolves. We don't wanna be in anybody's way. Next. Uh, the construction side, these are the projects that will be under construction next year. Uh, 31st Street, I won't talk about all of them, 30, but I will highlight a couple. 31st Street in Oak Brook, this will take care of Route 83 and the Jory intersection and then resurface. Uh, County Campus, those of you that come onto the campus and don't turn into the garage but stay on that North Ring Road, know it's, it's in pretty bad shape. Um, so that will be a reconstruct next year. Um, uh, Crest Road in the West Chicago area, heavily used by trucks. Not only does the roadway need resurfacing, but the shoulders are non-existent and the lanes are narrowing. So that'll be a pretty good uh, upgrade. And then the other projects are listed. Next, so this is our capital equipment request. Uh, two plows, 
400,000. Normally we ask for four and uh, because that's our, our desired replacement cycle. Each one we get about 10 years out of because of the uh, conditions they work under. This year, based on the local gas tax and the projected shortfall, um, we're only recommending two and no other equipment. In comparison to last year or this current year, we budgeted two million. So where we've had to make cuts, we're gonna stretch our mowers, stretch our trailers, stretch our uh, pavers for a little bit longer. The other thing we've had to do to make room for these plows, we've actually had to move the purchase of salt and move it under motor fuel tax, MFT. We've never funded under MFT, but we're allowed to. We're not allowed to buy equipment using MFT. So we had to make room for at least a couple plows. Um, okay, high level five year, next, 2125 program. High level 311 million, 22 million more than the last five year plan, the 20 through 24. Obviously the MFT Rebuild Illinois contributes to that ability to increase it. But then again, we projected a 20% decrease in 21, a 10% decrease in 22, again, all COVID related. And then the out years at 0% impact for COVID, we're hopeful. Or optimistic. Um, again, that's the five year. Uh, this is the actual project for 21, it's a pretty robust capital program, 46 million. And then, tw um, and then 23, 24, you can see where they're at. 23, 24 is where we really hope to hit the ground with our York Road reconstruction, pavement reconstruction, um, and our work across the street with our maintenance facility. So that's why there's a, there's a ramp up in those years. Next. The other budget we're responsible for is the Century Hill Lighting District uh, service area, actually. We got rid of the Lighting District. We absorbed them under the ACT initiative in 2016. So we have an electrical maintenance contractor. This whole Lighting District is 70, 80 light poles. Made sense to absorb them into us. More efficiently, we can, we can do it. So they've got, uh, so basically their budget is electricity and routine maintenance. Um, they do need to replace all their poles eventually. Uh, but again, we need to build up a reserve to cover that. Um, it won't be cheap, the 70 or 80 poles. So, uh, we'll look to do capital improvements in the central area as we get enough revenue and we have logical improvements. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Next presentation, Chris. We've met the 10% cut we were supposed to according to what the chairman requested, so that's not an issue. That's correct. On the operating side, yes. The okay. capital is always going to be, I look capital differently, but from the operating side, yes, we're at 10% plus. There. Okay. Does any uh, member have any questions regarding the presentation or anything in the budget specifically? I guess that's a no, thank you. And all this is online and every member has been sent this, correct? Yes, everybody got the budget. I will email everybody also the, right. um, the hard copy of the presentation. I apologize for those that are remote. I didn't get that to you. All right, now if that's the uh, do with the presentation, we'll go uh, to item nine. Any report from the state's attorney? Thank you, Mr. John. Do we have anything under old business, Chris? No, sir. How about anything under new business? No, sir. And without objection, we stand adjourned. Take care, guys. Great.